I was talking to a prospective client last week and she had no idea the amount of government benefits that she was available to get. So I'm gonna break down the CPP, the OAS, GIS, how it all works, how it integrates, so let's get into it. First off, let's cover CPP, the Canadian Pension Plan. Now the Canadian Pension Plan is a government benefit that you pay into. So it's something that will come off your paycheck. Uh, if you're self-employed, you may not be paying into it. If you don't pay into it, you're not gonna get anything out of it on the other end. So make sure you understand how it works. A lot of self-employed people don't wanna pay into it because they have to pay both the employee and the employer side. But then when they hit retirement, they haven't saved properly, which a lot of business owners don't. They don't have the CPP, which can be a substantial payment, and they're left in a tough spot. So if that's you, make sure you talk to your financial advisor, figure out the best solution for you. For the rest of you, it's how much you pay into CPP. Now there's a big calculation that goes into it. We'll link a calculator below. CPPcalculator.com is a great resource for most of you to use to figure out how much CPP you will collect at age 65 or maybe a bit before a bit after so you can run those numbers for you if you have survivor benefit if you've been on cpp disability uh, or child rearing years those three things the cpp calculator that i'm linking below it won't be exact because it doesn't take those things into consideration so if that's you you're going to want to loop in with doug runchy who's kind of the cpp guru here in uh, canada and he can run those numbers for you we recently did this for a client of ours uh, he came to us, we're putting a financial plan together. As we were looking through his CPP numbers, he was collecting survivor benefit. And he kind of told us like, I need to start CPP at 60 because of survivor benefit and, and maximum amounts. And I said, I don't think that's going to be the right solution, but let's loop in Doug. Let's hire him to put these numbers together. Doug did, and the numbers are mind blowing. And we're gonna have that in the video next week. So stay tuned for that. So again, you're going to get out what you put in. It's based on how much you contribute, how many years of maximum contributions, how many years you didn't contribute. So a lot of you are going to receive a number between probably 700 and $1,200. Now in 2023, the maximum CPP payment, so the most you can collect from CPP at age 65 is $1,306. So that would be the most you can receive from your CPP. The average CPP in Canada is much lower. It's about $811. So that's just people not paying in, not max, all of that. So average is 811, the max is 1306. So again, it's going to depend how much you put into it. Now, CPP have talked about this in other videos, so I'll just lately talk about it now, but you can take CPP anywhere between 60 and 70. So when you jump into your My Service Canada online sector and it says, here's your CPP number at 65, that's going to be based on you continuing to work and contribute the way you currently are until 65. So if you're 55 and you look at that number, but you stop working today, your CPP number is gonna be different. And that's where I would utilize that cppcalculator.com that I'll link below. So if you continue to work all the way up to 65, you're gonna have a rough idea what your CPP number is that you're gonna collect on a monthly basis. Now, CPP is a taxable benefit. You will pay tax on it, and you can have CRA withhold tax at source to make sure you don't have a big tax bill at tax time. So again, work with your financial planner when the time comes to figure out how much withholding tax you should have on your CPP amount. Now, again, if you take CPP early, it's going to be reduced. So 0.6% every month that you take it early before age 65. And there's also a benefit to delay your CPP past age 65, 0.7% per month. So it's about 8.4% every single year that you defer your CPP past age 65. Now, if you defer it past age 65, the years from 65 to 70, those don't count as contributory or non-contributory years. So if you retired at 65 or any time before that, and delayed CPP till 70, those years between 65 and 70, don't worry, that doesn't impact your CPP amount that you're going to receive. So don't worry that, oh, I have five more years that I didn't put anything in and it's going to affect. It's only years before age 65. If you continue to work past age 65 and pay into CPP, there's a post-retirement benefit amount. I won't cover that in this video. We'll do another video on that. And we actually have a video that we did uh, about a year and a half ago on that. We'll link that above as well. So within the CPP kind of benefit landscape, there's other little benefits that can come out as well. So I'll kind of read through them. And again, we'll link this below. So the Government of Canada website has a lot of great information. So again, there's the post-retirement benefit, the disability benefit, the post-retirement disability benefit, two different things. 
a survivor pension, younger than 65, and one that's for older than 65. Again, we've done a video on this just recently talking about pension benefit of around CPP, survivor pension. A children of disabled CPP or deceased CPP. So again, there's some benefits there. There's a death benefit. And then there's combined benefits. So if you're collecting you know, survivor benefit and you go to apply for your CPP benefit, there's a maximum amount. So again, that maximum amount will be $1,313 if you're talking about the retirement pension and survivor benefit. And then the combined survivor pension and disability benefit, 1542. A lot of numbers, a lot of details. So if you fall into some of those categories like CPP survivor benefit or disability benefit, understand what the maximums are. And again, like our client, which we ran the numbers for, if you're not sure about timing about take to CPP when you're collecting survivor, like there's a lot of moving parts there. Make sure you talk to Doug, get those numbers run for you. So your Canadian pension plan is going to be your largest, most likely, your largest government benefit that you collect. So if it's, you've been in Canada for a while, you've been paying into it, it will more than likely be the largest amount. The next one on the scale is OAS, old age security. Now, if you haven't paid a lot into CPP, then obviously old age security might be a little larger for you. Old age security and CPP are different in that old age security, the benefit is based on how long you've been in Canada. So it has nothing to do with amounts you paid in. So CPP, it's amount you paid in. That's kind of you know the calculation on how much you're gonna get out. Old age security is based on how many years you were in Canada. And so that's based on 40 years as your max. So if you've been in Canada for 20 years before age 65, so between 18 and 65, you were in Canada for only 20 years, then you're gonna get 50% of the old age security benefit. If you've been here for 40 years or more between 18 and 65, you're going to get the full amount. Now the full amount in 2023 at age 65 is $691. Once you're over 75, there's a 10% bump and currently that maximum is $760.10, so quite a bit more. Now one thing to note with the old age security is if your income is above a certain threshold, then you're gonna be clawed back. And we always use the term clawed back, the actual term is pension recovery tax. So you're going to have a pension recovery tax, which means that they're going to take back some of your old age security that you've collected because your income is over a certain threshold. So starting here in July 2023, the income threshold is based on your 2022 income and it's $81,761. So if you've made over that, for every dollar that you made over that, you're gonna be clawed back 15% or 15 cents. If you're over that threshold, this is an individual. So again, it's based on your tax. It's not a household income, it's individual. So if you've been able to income split and all that, perfect. So that threshold again, 81,761, you know, once you've kind of hit the maximum threshold, which is 134.626, then you will be fully clawed back. So if you make over that upper threshold, again, it's a little bit higher if you're 75 or older because of that boost. So the threshold there will be 137.331. Because again, it's a percentage of the amount you're receiving. When you're over 75, you're collecting more. So there's kind of more room on the higher side for that clawback. So again, if you're making 150, 160, $70,000 a year in retirement, you will not collect old age security. Maybe a good problem to have, but you won't collect it. Again, we've run many financial plans where we put the client information in there, run it, and there's going to be clawback, but it's kind of close. So we're able to kind of work some numbers and, and figure stuff around, A, save some taxes, but B, get some OAS and, and avoid some of that recovery tax. You know, try to build a plan with your financial planner to avoid that recovery tax, but understand all the nuances that go into it. Some clients that we have would say, look, we can't avoid it. And if we try to avoid it, we're gonna actually pay more tax and you're gonna have less in your pocket. So sometimes just having that recovery tax, I mean, it's a good problem, I always say. If you have a recovery tax, it means you have a great income. It's a great problem to have. If you can avoid it, perfect. If not, move on and deal with it that way. Now, one thing I wanna know with old age security is it's based on income from like two years ago or maybe a, a year ago, depending on kind of timing and calculation, all that. So if you've just retired and you apply for old age security, you might be fully clawed back or partially clawed back on some of that benefit because they're gonna look at your previous income and you were working, so you might have a really good income. So just be aware of that. There is a few forms you can contact My Service Canada, figure out what that process is for you based on the timing of the year and all that, but you can kind of show them, look, I'm not actually making money now uh, or making a lot less and you could apply, but my recommendation to you just as a blanket statement here is if you had good income last year, you were still working, you're recently uh, retired, defer that old, old age security. If you defer it past 65, so if you don't start it right at 65, 
you can delay it and you do get a 0.6 bump every single month for delaying that benefit. So there is a benefit to delay it. There could be you know, penalties to start it early based on your previous income. You know, don't just retire at 65 and start OAS because you may not get any. Let's say you retire at 65, you start OAS right away, and they say, look, you're gonna, you know, recovery tax is 100%. You're not getting any old age security. It still triggers as if you started it at 65. If you had just waited a year, A, you're gonna get more money now because you've got that 0.6% every month bump. So there's an increase in your payment and you're actually gonna get your payment because now they're kind of looking back and say, yeah, you retired, you don't have as much income, you get the full amount or part of it or whatever it is. So just be aware of that timing of retirement, OAS, the recovery tax, all of that is very important and we see it again and again. Once you apply for old age security, if you're in a lower income tax bracket, whether it's an individual or kind of household uh, couple, then there's something that's called the GIS, the Guaranteed Income Supplement. And not a lot of people qualify for this, but you might qualify for some and it's all based on your income, your, your again, household income. So make sure you understand, do you qualify? Apply for it naturally, which most people do. I had a client that just applied for uh, old age security is starting it here in a month. And they actually got a small amount of GIS. So they applied for it based on kind of their income previously. They're going to get that GIS. Not a huge amount, about a hundred and something dollars a month, but it's extra money. So make sure you apply for that GIS along with your old age security. Uh, it's income based, so it'll kind of automatically trigger. Uh, so it's not really something you have to apply for, it's part of the OAS application. And then again, if you qualify for GIS and you have a spouse or common law partner that's between 60 and 64 that's not collecting OAS, there's an allowance as well. So again, I'm not gonna dive into all of that in this video, but again, talk about layers of government, government benefit. It's the CPP the OAS, the GIS, there's the allowances, there's the survivor benefit, the death benefits, there's a lot of moving parts here. When it comes to government benefits, CPP, OAS, GIS, all of these benefits, these payments are increased with inflation, which is a great thing because we've had high inflation lately. For a lot of you, you've seen a big bump. If you're collecting CPP, OAS, GIS, you've seen a big bump in your payment. So yes, we're seeing you know everything that we buy, food, gas, everything is much more expensive, but these government benefits increase as well. And you know, this is one of the reasons we always say for clients, you know, increase your CPP benefit by deferring it to 70 or close to 70, because later in life, if we see another spike in inflation, at least that like pension that you're collecting, it's a bigger amount and it's inflated off that bigger amount. So it's gonna be a double benefit for you. So if you're watching this video, getting close to retirement, you wanna make sure you understand the nuances. Again, this is kind of high level, what's out there, you know, the averages, the maximums, all of that you wanna make sure you understand CPP. That is typically for most of you, your biggest benefit. Old age security, it's more of a how long you've been here, it's a default, most of you start at 65, which 65 to 68 is typically the right answer there, uh, unless you're still working and you have an income. So with your CPP, you need to take it a, a step further here and work on some calculations, work with your financial planner to map this out. Again, taking your CPP at 60 versus 70 is a massive difference. But if you defer it, you need to make sure that you're kind of drawing down income. You have income to fill that 10 year gap. The last tip I have for you here, and this is really important, is that if you're collecting CPP disability, which is a lot of you watching this video, if you're collecting CPP disability, when it stops at age 65, you do not, and I repeat, you do not have to take your CPP. You can still defer it all the way to 70. It's not an automatic start at 65. So you can defer it to 70. So if you're, on CPP disability, there's a little bit of tip for you. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you in the next video.